Hello and welcome to today's video. We're going to talk about combinations. So combinations again are all possible arrangements of things, but this is where the order doesn't matter. So basically it's how many groups can I make of some larger group. So how many ways can I have a top three finisher? How many different top three finishes can I have basically? But that would be where first, second, and third would be the same as third, second, first. So it's the same three people, so it doesn't matter what order they came in. So that's the difference between the permutations and combinations. So combinations are generally smaller than permutations. And again, there's two types, the same two types that we had before. First is with combinations. So this is, rep is, is with repetition. So this is be multiples of the same object within your group. An example, it could be ice cream scoops. So three scoops are available in each cone, but you could have two of one flavor and one of another. That would be an example where you, you would use a combination with repetition. Because the reason you'd use a combination and not a permutation generally is because you would care about, you wouldn't care if you had a scoop on the top and a scoop on the bottom that were the same. You would just care that you had two scoops chocolate, one scoop strawberry, not necessarily the order in which they came in. So that's why you would use a combination here. And then you have repetition is not allowed. This is when obviously you can't, you cannot have multiples of the same type within your group. An example is the lottery. So numbers are drawn one at a time, and if we have the numbers, we win no matter what order they're in. So this is another combination because you don't have to have it in the exact order, you just have to have the numbers. So they might draw five two-digit numbers, and if you have those five, you win the lottery. It doesn't matter if you had the five in that order. So that's a combination with rep without repetition because you can't have the same... Um, when once a, a ball comes out of the lottery, it doesn't go back in. You can't have 75 and 75. It's got to be some other number. So how to calculate regular combinations. So this is repetition is allowed. These are actually more difficult than when repetition isn't allowed. It's kind of the opposite of permutations where it was easier when repetition was allowed. Now it's a lot harder. And this is definitely the probably the hardest type of the four, um, like combinations, permutations, repetition, no repetition. This is probably the hardest one. So we're gonna, I'm gonna first show you repetition is not allowed. So here you simply treat it like a permutation and then modify it so order doesn't matter. Well, how do we do that? Consider our, exa our example of a race that we went over last time. The race has 10 runners and we wanted to determine how many different groups of people could form the top three. We don't care about the places within the top three, just how many groups of people could be in the top three. Begin by calculating the permutation and then recognize how many of these will be the same to us now. So reduce the number reduce the number of permutations formula by the ways the objects could be ordered because we don't doesn't don't care about order anymore. So think about this: a thousand runners. I want to know well how many different ways can I get a top three? I'm going to start with permutation. So I'm going to do permutation of a thousand runners and I'm choosing three. Well, I know that that's a thousand divided by a thousand minus three factorial, and I know that that equals a thousand times 999 times 998. That's the answer to the permutation. But now it says reduce the number of permutations by how many ways the objects could be in ordered. So how do I do that? Well, how many different ways can I organize these three runners? Because now I don't care if this guy is first and this guy moves to third. That's fine. It's the same thing to me now. Well, there's three factorial ways I can organize them. So three factorial here. And so my answer would be, well, combination of 1,000 comma 3. Well, we're going to start with that permutation formula, 1,000. Uh, this should be 1,000 factorial. I just forgot the exclamation point. Uh, 1,000 minus 3 factorial. The same thing we've been doing, but then we just divide that by 3 factorial. And I can just put that right here because it doesn't matter. If I put the whole thing divided by, it would end up there anyway. And notice that this is the formula that we have right here. We say n factorial over n minus r, this is our permutations formula, so permutation formula. And then I multiply by 1 over r factorial, and hopefully you kind of understand why I did that after looking at this example. Then what you get is this n factorial over r factorial times n minus r factorial. And I read that as n choose r, so that would be 1,000 choose 3, and I would write it like that. A lot of people think it looks like division, but we don't put the line through, so it's not division. So that's how we do a combination when repetition is allowed. So treat it like a permutation and then just do a simple modification or just memorize the formula. Either one works. So now the harder situation. This is when we have repetition is allowed. 
So now it's more diff difficult to calculate and we're going to show a special technique to calculate the, these that actually turns them into an example of type two where repetition was allowed or it wasn't allowed. So we have five flavors of ice cream, chocolate, strawberry, vanilla, cookie dough, and cotton candy. We have three scoops and we want to know how many variations they can be. There can be. So there are n equals five things to choose from and we're choosing three of them, right? There's five flavors and we're choosing three of them. And the thing is repetition is allowed. I can have two scoops of chocolate. I can have three scoops of chocolate. I can do whatever order I want. I'm getting three scoops, but I can do whatever I want with the three scoops. And the reason it's a combination, not a permutation, is because like I said earlier, if I, if I get chocolate on the top and chocolate on the bottom and then strawberry in the middle, I see that as the same as chocolate, the cho two scoops of chocolate on the top and strawberry on the bottom. It's the same thing to me, I get the same ice cream. So the way I want to do it is I want to consider the ice cream being in boxes where we can control to either move past the box or scoop. So and let's see, look at an example. So each box represents a flavor. So this is chocolate, strawberry, uh, vanilla, and then what, all, what else do I have? Cookie dough, and then I have cotton candy. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go down and I'm gonna highlight ones when I pick up an ice cream scoop. So I didn't get chocolate, I didn't get strawberry, I got vanilla, then I got two more vanillas. I'm feeling boring today, so I'm getting three vanillas. So then obviously my cone's full, so I passed on cookie dough and I passed on cotton candy. So how many different ways could I do this? Now I want you to look, how many boxes do I have? I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I have seven boxes. So what I've done is I have seven boxes and I'm choosing three of them. So what's that formula gonna be? Well, it's going to be seven, fact six, seven factorial <clears throat> and that's R plus N minus one and that's the factorial on the top. And then it's R factorial because I'm still choosing three of them. Then six factorial on the inside, it's R minus one, fact N minus one factorial, which again is still the um, n was uh, 5 and there's 4 now so 4 factorial and the reason it's 4 factorial is because I can pass up on 4 of them here so that's the formula and that's kind of the intuition of why it works the way it does so hopefully kind of, that kind of makes sense so the formula is r plus n minus 1 we take away 1 because if I have 5 options and I'm choosing 3 there's not really 8 different things I can get there's 7 and then it's r factorial just like before where r was at the bottom but then we do n minus 1 factorial as well so that's the way we do these here so that's if repetition is allowed as you can see that's a lot tougher it's not easy and i recommend drawing the picture to kind of help you make sense of these so now let's look at some practice with combinations first one how many five card hands can be drawn from a standard deck of 52 cards this is a classic poker question how many different hands can i possibly get well, there's 52 cards, right? And I'm choosing five of them. And why am I gonna do a combination and not a permutation? Well, I don't care about the order. It doesn't matter if I get the jack first and then the ace second. It just matters what my hand looks like at the end. And is repetition allowed or not allowed? It's not allowed, right? Because I can't draw the same card if I already have it in my hand. There's only one of it in the deck and I can't have it again. So how many different five hard, hard hands can I draw? Well, it's 52, choose 5. And what's the formula for that? Well, it's 52 factorial divided by 52 minus 5 factorial. So 52 minus 5 factorial times 5 factorial. And what does that equal? 52 factorial divided by 47 factorial times 5 factorial. And notice I can simplify this pretty simply because I know 52 factorial and 47 factorial, they're actually going to simplify to, it's going to be 52 times 51 times 50 times 49 times 48. And then the 47 factorial would cancel everything. Then it'd be all over 5 factorial, but 5 factorial is 120. So that's what I would get. 52 times all that uh, divided by 120, that would be my answer. That's how many possible hands in poker you could get when you have five card draw. Okay, so now a more specific one. How many different ways could I draw one diamond, two hearts, and two clubs? In my hand, in my deck, That's those are the ones that I wanna get. Okay, well, so this one we gotta think about. It's kind of like three situations again. So we kinda have how many chances do I get one diamond? How many chances do I get two hearts? And how many ch times could I get two clubs? So 
I'm going to find the possible ways I can draw one diamond. Well, there's 12 diamonds, right? And I want to choose one of them. So 12 choose one times I need to get two hearts. Well, that's 12 uh, choose two. Wait, no, it should be 13. Sorry, because there's 13 different um, cards in each suit. So there's 13 different diamonds. There's 13 different clubs and there's 13 different hearts. So 13 choose two. And then it's going to be 13 choose two again. So let's think about what I, why I did that. So this is my chance of drawing one diamond. This is my chance of drawing one, uh, two, two hearts, so two H. This is my chance of drawing two clubs. And the reason it's 13, like I said, is because there's 13 in each suit, and I'm choosing one of the diamonds, two of the hearts, and two of the clubs. And what does this equal? Well, it's 13 factorial divided by, well, remember it's 13 minus the uh, R, so that's actually 12 factorial times one factorial. If you wanted to put that, you wouldn't need to. Then it'd be 13 factorial divided by 11 factorial times two factorial times 13 factorial over 11 factorial times two factorial. And what does this equal? Well, 13 over 12 factorial, that's just gonna be 13 times, well, this is gonna be 13 times 12 divided by two, 13 times 12 divided by two, and then again, times 13 times 12 divided by two. So I could leave it as that if I wanted to, or I could simplify um, I'll simplify a little bit. I could make it 13 cubed times um, 12 squared divided by 4. And you could plug that into your calculator. And that would tell you how many different ways you could draw a diamond, two hearts, and two clubs. So this, we actually combined the product principle with um, these combinations. Because one combination is how can I draw one diamond. Another combination is how can I get two hearts. And then the last one is how, how can I get two clubs. And those are the different ways that you can do it. And then you multiply them together because there's in ways I can do this, there's in ways I can do that, and in ways I can do that. So you multiply them to get the whole number. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, let me know if you have any questions. I know this can be tough at first. These are not meant to be easy problems. Um, we're gonna do a lot more practice with them. So if you're just if you're struggling a little bit, that's totally fine. Thanks for watching and let me know if you have any questions. Have a good one.